Ah, <sighs> today I'm reporting from the heart of this heat wave. But we're actually talking about Iran again. Because something strange is happening right now. Right now it feels like a bar fight where two people are about to go at it, but are both really hoping someone will intervene. You said what about me? Oh, you're going down. Bro, this is the part where you hold me back. Oh man, if he wasn't holding on to me, I would knock you out. Don't let go. Whew. I mean, the biggest things that have come out of this recently are first, America bragging about shooting down an Iranian drone, to which the foreign minister replied on Twitter, wow, does everybody have an active Twitter these days? We have not lost any drones in the Strait of Hormuz, nor anywhere else. I'm worried that the USS Boxer has shot down their own UAS by mistake. Oh yeah, I bet you're so worried about that. Thanks for your concern. Man, talk about trying to figure out which notoriously bad primary source is telling the truth. Gee, can QAnon weigh in so I have a third opinion to work off of? At the same time, Britain snagged an Iranian tanker headed from Iran to Syria through the Strait of Gibraltar. Which talk about taking the long way to drop off some oil at your neighbor's place. The reason for not taking the Suez Canal was that this shipment was transporting sanctions violating oil. In retaliation for that, Iran cited the international rule of, hey dick, I'm going to do the same thing right back to you, and took a tanker from the UK and a tanker from Liberia. This is, of course, after Iran allegedly disabled several more tankers from Japan and other countries with small explosives. Since that point, the Liberian tanker has been released. Let's not get them wrapped up into this whole thing. But the UK tanker, well, that's still there. So this brings us to the strange place we're in today. If you want to learn about how we got to this point, I recently made an episode covering all of the sanctions and the US leaving the Iran deal. And I'm just going to kind of yada yada over this part. Link to that in the corner if you want a part one. All this leads me to two questions that I'm going to try to answer today. First, why does Iran seem to hate cargo ships so much? I mean, there are reports of so many cargo ships being pursued in the Strait of Hormuz, even Somali pirates are saying, whoa, 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 you gotta pace yourself a little bit. Second, what's the plan to address this whole thing? Because much to our dismay of National Security Advisor John Bolton, Iran just made us an offer to end this thing that some will find enticing. First though, these tankers. Because interestingly enough, the most important question here isn't who, what, why, or how, but where. As this Iranian issue enters its middle ages, everything seems to revolve around this Strait of Hormuz. There is no place on the globe more important for the world's oil supplies than the Strait of Hormuz. So what is it? It is a narrow shipping channel threading between Oman to the south and Iran to the north, linking the Persian Gulf to the Gulf of Oman and oceans beyond. This is not the area you want to see ships disappearing. A few months ago, I did a report in late April when Iran was threatening to shut down the strait if America didn't remove our oil sanctions. Yeah, back to the bar fight metaphor for a second, these punches were pretty telegraphed. If you don't stop me, I'm gonna hit you. You didn't stop? Well, I guess I have to do it then. Okay, here goes nothing. This is where things get interesting though, because I'm gonna link together two seemingly separate stories. First, the Strait of Hormuz, a 39 kilometer strait that is the only route to the open ocean for over one sixth of global oil production and one third of the world's liquefied natural gases. Here's the good news, none of that goes to America. That's right, we might be betting with someone else's money on this one. Most of the oil goes to Asia, followed by Europe, and then Africa. This is why you're hearing about British, Liberian, and Japanese ships getting taken and not American ones. The only American ships in the region, well, good luck trying to stop the United States 5th fleet. So this is where a second, pretty seemingly unrelated story comes in. As Donald Trump recently tweeted, China gets 91% of its oil from the strait, Japan 62%, and many other countries likewise. Yeah, that part is just not true. More like 30% for China, but still, 30%. 
So why are we protecting these shipping lanes for other countries many years for zero compensation? All of these countries should be protecting their own ships on what has always been a dangerous journey. We don't even need to be there in that the United States has just become by far the largest producer of energy anywhere in the world. It almost feels like, about halfway through the tweet, he starts to realize just how easy it would be to write us right out of this drama. Enter the last person you would probably expect to hear when you clicked on this episode, Dancing with the Stars contestant turned the Department of Energy Secretary Rick Perry. So Mr. Secretary, if I can connect the dots of what you had been saying, are you saying that Iran has less leverage in this whole potential negotiation because the U.S. is the number one oil producer right now? Yeah, I think that's uh, certainly a part of it. Being able to disrupt the, uh, the markets, they think, impacts not just uh, their part of the world, but the United States as well. Uh, I don't think they have anywhere near as much leverage as they may think they have, and certainly I think the numbers uh, back that up as well. Alright, here's where things might get a little controversial because I'm about to make fracking seem pretty good. So get those masses hovering over the dislike button. Between the Sheol revolution, also known as fracking, and Rick Perry's many, many moves to liberalize oil production in America, we have recently become a net exporter of oil for the first time in 75 years last December. And I'm getting the vibe that right now, it feels like a pretty good time to be entering that market. So this brings up the obvious question, Iran, you realize your beef is with America, right? How would you preventing Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Oman from selling oil to Asia, Europe, and Africa hurt America, the country that's just starting to export a ton of those materials to those same countries? Well, it's simple. We know that countries in Asia rely on uh, freedom of navigation in the, in, in the Strait, in the Gulf of Oman, in the Persian Gulf, in the Strait of Hormuz. And so when Iran is conducting attacks against oil tankers in the region, it affects not just uh, Fujairah, uh, and, the, and uh, it affects much of the world, especially as we see you know, in oil prices. They're trying to impact global oil prices. If Europe needs more oil, our private oil companies are going to follow the money and send them more oil, driving up the prices domestically. Jumping ahead a few steps in assumptions, the hope is, man, we're paying four bucks at the pump again? I really wish I had voted for Clinton. Maybe Pence will handle this better. Anyways, if this drags on for quite some time, shipping costs would go up, demand for cars go down, and everything just slows down a little bit. Now they would have been able to successfully pull this off, maybe into the mid-Obama period, but then something great or terrible happened, depending on whether your hatred for Iran can overshadow some people in America's drinking water being flammable. Think about the geopolitical power that our shale boom has not Absolutely. only given us, and but it's changed. Yes. Eight, we did 8.4 million barrels of oil a day five years ago last May. Now it's 12.2 million. Not only is that another 4 million barrels, but that's geopolitical power. We can be more aggressive and not worry about $6 a gallon gas. I mean, oil prices did go up after the attacks, but if you look at the one-year oil commodity prices, you probably wouldn't be guessing that one-sixth of global oil production is currently at stake. So why, again, would you choose to start pulling over boats in the strait? Well, it's probably because Iran doesn't have a ton of options for how to hit the United States right now. They have this one thing that can spike global oil prices, they could start building nuclear bombs again, and of course they could start telling some of their proxy forces and militias that they definitely don't fund or influence. It's open season on United States armed forces and military installations. Of course, no detailed information can be released at this time for the last one, so I don't want to be too much of a boy who cried WMD. So it seems like, at this point, most of these stops are out in the Iranian plan. The question now is, what next? While well, going on the offensive, Iran kind of blinked this week with the Iranian foreign minister's arrival in New York, an offer Thursday to trade a more intrusive nuclear inspections regime for US sanctions relief. 
Iran offered a deal with the US in which it would formally and permanently accept enhanced inspections of its nuclear program in return for the permanent lifting of United States sanctions. Again, this might sound huge, but under Obama's deal in the year 2023, if everything was going well with the deal, Iran's Congress would have signed this additional protocol with the International Atomic Energy Agency. It just would bring that signing period to today in exchange for sanctions relief. Best part though, Trump doesn't have to say he's going back to the Iran deal, because this would be a separate thing. You bet Trump was doing a victory dance after this one. <laughs> or hopefully not. Ugh. Zarif's offer is unlikely to be accepted, but the foreign minister made it clear that Tehran is willing to compromise, and even praised the president's prudence. Wow, 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 that really just happened last week? I might be able to stop leaning on that non-nuclear option pun soon. Of course, John Bolton is not too pleased with any of these developments because that dude makes war, not love. Now to enter speculation station for a second, because while no official talks appear to be underway, between this offer and Trump's repeated willingness to renegotiate the deal, people seem to think this might actually happen soon. The biggest complaints right now are, gee, this current offer looks a lot like Obama's Iran deal, sanctions relief for no nukes. In the coming months though, we'll probably see the United States negotiating for a deal with Iran that comprehensively addresses the regime's destabilizing behavior, not just their nuclear program, but also their missile program, support to terrorism, and maligned regional behavior. Everything is pretty up in the air right now though, but man, if this administration can stick the landing on this one, that would be crazy. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up to let me know what you saw if you liked it. I really do pay attention to that. And right now, I am about to take a cold shower. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.